All right, welcome back to the Artist Connection Podcast. This is Matt Kasar with today's very special guest, the owner of Oklahoma-based Reckless Abandonment Pictures, LLC, and the director and producer of the brand new movie, The Post-Human Project. Welcome, sir. Thanks for having me on, Matt. Yeah, I always get tongue-tied when I do long intros. I usually try to keep it short for that reason, but uh, you have a lot of really, really cool stuff under your belt already, and I wanted to make sure I got that all in. Well, you forgot to say Emmy Award winning. And I have that written down with, with a... <laughs> I'm, just, I'm totally kidding. <laughs> exclamation point after it. Emmy Award awesome. winning director, producer, Kyle Roberts. That's a mouthful. <laughs> well, thank you, sir. Yeah, I, so so many things I want to talk to you about, and I really, I, I'm honored that you took the time to, to meet with me and talk about, really, the post-human project here on this show, but also your life and your influences and, and, and things that got you where you are today. Yeah, I'm excited about it. So the Post-Human Project, uh, available video on demand just about a week and a half ago, May 1st, 2015. Yeah, it's on uh, iTunes, Amazon, Google Play, Xbox, PlayStation, pretty much anything you could think of. <laughs> Type in Post-Human Project. Yeah. You should be able to find it, and then we have all of our links on our website, posthumanmovie.com, uh, as well. Nice. I'll link to that in the show notes here so people can cool. people can easily find that. And this is your first feature film. Yeah, and you know, why not do a <laughs> visual effects driven, you know, superhero film uh, on a micro budget for the first <laughs> for the first movie? Um, I've done uh, several uh, stop motions, and uh, I've directed over 100 music videos at this point. Wow! Uh, for for friends and and, just, and bands and stuff like that, and so obviously music is you know a big part of my life. Uh, and grew up, you know, loving uh, 80s John Hughes films. Uh, and wanted to make something kind of with the heart of, uh, of a John Hughes film, which I feel like isn't in, you know, a lot of teen movies today. Um, and then kind of mixed with, like, a cross-genre thing, kind of with that mixed with superpowers uh, and superheroes. Um, and it's something I hadn't really seen done on any level, and we're going to go ahead and try to do it, you know, <laughs> as my first feature on a micro-budget. Um, well, you, knock, yeah. you, you definitely knocked it out of the park because, like I told you before we started recording, I, I like to go into things with pretty much a blank slate. You know, mm-hmm. I don't want any, I don't want any reviews to kind of taint my opinion or give me things to look for and then say, "Oh, they were right. That part was a little off." You know what reviews can sometimes be. So mm-hmm. I, I came into this totally as a blank slate, and the connection to, I mean, I, you know, I grew up. I was born in 1969, so I grew up in the 70s, and in the 80s was when I was in high school when the characters in your film. Are. And for me, one of the things that, that, that stood out, not only the John Hughes connection with the soundtrack, which we'll talk about, but just how life has changed for a teenager nowadays with technology. It's, it's something I don't think a lot about. I have a teenager. My daughter's 15, uh, going to be 16 this summer. And I see what she does with her phone at home and stuff, but I don't get to see her interact with her peer group. So sure. One scene in the film, and I'm not going to give away, obviously, any of the story, but one scene in the film where the where the one guy is getting bullied, you know, the other bullies are holding out the camera phone, and they're taping all this stuff now. Mm-hmm. Totally foreign to me. I can't even imagine that, but I can see in the hands of a bully what that kind of technology can do <laughs> for someone. Well, and, that, and not to get into too much of this, but we wanted to have things, you know, it's not a totally anti-bullying movie and anti, you know, uh, abusive step-parents kind of thing, you know, even though we kind of hit on that. Sure. But we wanted to hit on several things, at least a little bit, that are very, you know, prevalent today. I mean, it, that's kind of a, a big life. issue right now. People are getting in fights, and they post them, and then people end up getting sued because they posted that footage, and, you know, it, it's detrimental to that, you know, that kid uh, that ends up getting bullied. Um, so, so yeah, we, we didn't really want to be all, all wholly, you know, 100% about any, any one thing. Right. We kind of, you know, touch on several of those things, and, and more or less, the film, you know, like you said, it's about these five teenagers. They're, they're about to graduate high school, and they're all kind of freaking out in their own way about, you know, what they're going to do with their life, uh, which I think a lot of us can, you know, <laughs> relate to. Absolutely. Um, and then, you know, they go on this rock climbing trip to kind of celebrate uh, and end up getting superpowers and kind of have to save save the world, sort of, and, and get back to graduation. Because, <laughs> uh, again, they're, they're still a high school kid. But, yeah. But all that really, when we sat down and, and, and thought about it, like, is a metaphor for adolescence. The superhero part is just kind of a metaphor for what's already happening in their lives, um, which is, is also um, kind of spoiler alert, but the reason why all of their powers have to do with what they need or want most in life. So everything's very story-driven. Um, and, 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 you know, the visual effects, I did about 80% of those, so I'm, I'm kind of partial to those as well. Sure. Uh, but, the, you know, visual effects are fine, you know, for an independent film, but... 
but the the story is is definitely the key part um, for our movie. Well, it feels like times have have certainly changed in terms of 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 being a teenager. I mean, those I, I remember being bullied. Although in the seventies and eighties, I don't know that we called it bullying. It was just well, I don't know what it was. We didn't call it anything because for me, <laughs> you know, the guys were just busting your balls, I guess, you know, or, or just giving sure. you a hard time. But you were all friends. You all kind of grew up together. It was never strangers doing it. At least I grew up in a small town, so I I pretty much went through all of my school career, my education career from kindergarten all the way up to college with basically the same 15 or 20 people in my circle of friends, you know, so <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. But, but there were things that happened and like, for me, it was always us against the adults, you know, or not sure. against, or just, it was a different world. So like, I was even just thinking back this week, I was going through some things on eBay and seeing what was out there. I like to, I like to, to shop online. And I was thinking back to some cool stuff that I had as a kid that got stolen at school, and, and you know who did it, but I never went to sure. the teacher once, you know, so it's like... Yeah, oh yeah. It's like now with well, the camera funny. phones, you're pretty much admitting, like, hey, look what I'm doing, look uh, look around, <laughs> I'm punching this dude, hey, it's me, big smile on my face, it's it's really interesting, the, the dynamic between the two the two worlds that, you know, 30 years apart, I'm 30 years removed from all of that, so... Well, exactly, well, and that's one of the cool things about Breakfast Club is that, you know, the, the fact that you know, all these kids didn't have anything in common at all. Just about, uh, and and they were brought together kind of by their hatred for the principal, right? <laughs> uh, right. So they they found their their common ground. Uh, yeah. Not that they didn't necessarily been there probably did for sure, uh, but but that uh, that that they just you know they they were more like each other obviously than the principal, and so that's kind of where they found uh, their common ground together. And that's one thing in, in a different way we wanted to do with our film. Is that uh, we wanted to show it through through the eyes of these teenagers, and, and really their their parents aren't really in it right. a whole lot, right? Um, and so we wanted to show it through their eyes for sure. And and in, in getting to the story, I want to kind of mention Sterling Gates, who's a writer for DC Comics, and he was a comics writer by trade. Uh, and then Matt Price, they're the two writers for the film, and Matt Price is a buddy of mine in Oklahoma, and they did. Uh, I worked with them kind of you know throughout the process, but uh, they did a phenomenal job writing this picture. It's 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 very well written. The the dialogue, some of the asides, some of the references, and it, it throughout were were just wonderful. Now, was it for you? you know, like you said, you did a lot of stop motion animation, and I checked out some of your stuff on YouTube. Um, Batman is very near and dear to my heart. I grew up with that the original series in reruns, of course, in the seventies. But having all oh, cool. of the Mego action figures and all the all those things, and seeing what you did with that, and even Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which was a little <laughs> after my time, but still a lot of right. fun to watch. Yeah, that was uh, very much, Ninja Turtles and X-Men were kind of my, my childhood, sort of. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, you do these things, and you just kind of have fun, and I started doing a couple of stop motions and, and at the end of college, my college years, and especially with the and, you know invention of DSLR photography and stuff like that, kind of, not that stop motion is ever easy, <laughs> but that kind of made it a little bit easier that I can project it to my computer, have a ghost image of what I was doing, and, and you know, just kind of have some fun with it, and then I just post it on YouTube, and then start realizing that people are, you know, I, I kind of have an audience here. Uh, and then and then we'll just kind of do stuff for fun, um, like, like the X-Men one, and then, like, LA Times started writing about it, and USA Today, and MPB, <laughs> and, like, all this stuff. Uh, it was just, it's just kind of bizarre, you know, you kind of, as you're doing this stuff for fun, and um, because I'm passionate about it, and uh, you know, I think this is a side note, but sure. being passionate about whatever you're doing, I think is so instrumental. Because one, because it's, it's it's hard work. <laughs> this whole this whole movie, doing those side motions, is a lot of hard work. Uh, but if you're passionate about it, it's it's fun, uh, and it's going to be what gets you through it. Um, and then finally, it's going to be what shows in the final product. Always, always. I, I mean. Stop motion for me has always been fascinating. I mean, when I was a kid, it was, you know, this goes way back, but, you know, reruns of, like, Gumby. And, and I think, oh, sure. I don't know if you had it on local television out there, but Davy and Goliath, which is a very strange, I, I, it's even like, a, I think it's a Christian-based kind of, they're, they're like oh, dope yeah, figures with a dog and that. talking dog and stuff or whatever. So. Yeah, I've seen some episodes of that. Yeah, yeah. So to do that, though, I mean, as I think about how that stuff was made, it seems like it was a super tedious process. And as you said, technology maybe made it a little less tedious for you, but it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's probably still very time-consuming. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it, yeah, uh, working on that stuff, you know, you show the stuff, and then what I like to do is then also add visual effects to it as well. And so it's, you know, it's 